Today we're going to start chapter 12, and section 12.1 talks about tangent lines, but we're actually going to talk about some other vocabulary, so please draw out the circle, and instead of using words to define this, we're going to look at our example and give examples to define the words. Okay, so let's start actually from the bottom at diameter, because you know some of these from the bottom. There are two different circles, so there are two different diameters. One diameter is diameter DG. Okay? It is a line segment because it has endpoints. The other diameter is HG. Okay? Once again, make sure you're notating because it is a line segment. There are four different radii in these circles. So let's go ahead and list our radii. DH is one, okay? and it is also a line segment. HG is the other, and if you notice, it is also the diameter of the small circle, but the radius of the larger. Okay? HA is the radius, and AG is the radius. All line segments. The center, remember we talked about that's how we name a circle. So the center of the small circle is circle A or center A, that point A. And for the larger of the one, we have H as our center. Now these are three important terms that we're going to be talking about. They're different types of lines within circles. So today we're specifically going to talk about tangent lines. And a tangent line is the line that does not enter the circle. It actually meets a, a circle at one point on the outside edge. So this line here in blue is our tangent line. So line G is our tangent line. It does not enter, but it just meets the circle at one point. A secant line goes through the circle and continues on forever. Okay, so our secant line is line DB. Okay, and it is a line, it does not stop, it keeps going. Now like chord, there are two different chords here. A chord is inside the circle, and its end points are on the edge of the circle. So here in green, is chord CE. It is a line segment since it stops. The other chord that I'm going to highlight is chord DB. And yes, we just talked about that being the secant, okay? But if we notate it with a line segment saying that it's stopping on the circle, it is also a chord. And I just saw that I wrote that wrong. Sorry. Um, DB. Okay, let me fix those letters. All right, so if you notice here, you need to pay attention to the notations because sometimes they're gonna talk about chords and sometimes they're gonna talk about um, secant lines. So let's talk about the common tangent. A common tangent is a tangent line that meets two circles at a point or, or touches both circles. So the common tangent here is gonna be line G because there's only one tangent line. And the point of tangency is the point at which the tangent line meets your circle. So G is the point that that tangent line meets the circle. So let's talk about what's unique about tangent lines and what we know about tangent lines. The first thing we know is that if you have a tangent line, it meets the radius at a right angle. Now, every time we saw a right angle so far in this course, we had it inside a figure. Well, that figure is going to come back. We can create a triangle, a right triangle, within my circle. We can be using c squared equals a squared plus b squared. You could also know that the angles are 180, okay, or anything we've really talked about with right triangles. So let's look at this first one. We're assuming that the line that appears to be tangent is tangent. So if we assume that, then we know that's a 90 degree angle. We're trying to solve for x. So really, we have a triangle with three angles. So what we just talked about, 180, add them up. x plus 90 plus 51 is that equal to 180. So the x in this is 39 degrees. The angle is 39 degrees. So that's with angles. Let's take a look at side lengths. It says, is st tangent to circle r? So we're proving that this is a right triangle. Well, a way to prove that something is the right triangle is that we know the Pythagorean theorem says that it's going to be equal to your a squared plus b squared. Because remember, it could be less than or greater than having an acute or obtuse angle or triangle. So let's take a look. Our right angle should be located, should be 
where the radius and our tangent meet. So this should be our 90 degree angle. You need to do that because you've got to find where your C is going to be. Well, right here, we only have 8. Okay, 8 is not the entire hypotenuse. So we need to figure out what this part is going to be. Well, hopefully, now that you see the colors, that part is the radius. So remember, we can also label that 5. So our C from R to T is 5 plus 8, or 13 squared. Put our little box to see, 5 squared plus 12 squared. So when you square this, you should get 169 to 169. So we can put an equal sign inside the box and say, yes, this is tangent because it equals out. So go ahead and see if you can solve for the second one and answer the question, is ST tangent to circle R? All right, so let's see if you got what we got. Well, first off, we have to add 12 there, so that's where we got the 19. Well, when you plug in your numbers, 19 squared does not equal 12 squared plus 16 squared, so this line is actually not a tangent line. All right, so this one is saying it is a tangent, and we're trying to find the radius. So what we're going to do is plug this into our c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So our c squared is this side length here. Well, we have an x and an 8. So really, x plus 8 is our c squared. That should equal x squared plus 12 squared. So I'm just plugging in my values. Now, you can't just distribute that square. Really, what that is saying is x plus 8 times x plus 8 equals x squared plus 144. So for this, you can either use the box method, depending on what algebra teacher, where you have an x and an 8, an x and an 8, or you can use FOIL, first, outer, and our last, whichever way you learned in Algebra 1. So you should get x squared, 8x, 8x, and 64, because you're just multiplying these numbers together to get fill in your box inside. And then, since they're all positive, you're going to do x squared. Just put them um, together. x squared plus 8x plus 8x plus 64. That still equals x squared plus 144. I'm going to simplify the left-hand side and just say x squared. We can combine these like terms. We get 16x plus 64 equals x squared plus 144. Now I'm going to notice that our x squareds are on both sides, so what happens is they cancel out, which will happen in pretty much every problem we do in this section. So x squared cancel out, 16x plus 64 equals 144. So that looks a little bit nicer, and we're going to subtract the 64 to get 80, divide by 16, x equals 5. So that is our radius for the circle. So just a little bit more algebra to do. All right, now we're going to talk about what common tangents are. So it's really hard to see in the first, um, the first vocabulary page. What I'm going to do is show you A first, because once you see what it's like, B and C will come easier. Common tangents have to, is a tangent line that have to meet both circles. So in A, there are this many common tangents. As you see, each one of those lines touch the circle at one point, at both circles at one point. So there are four common tangents to this set of circles. So why don't you try B and C? Hopefully for B, you got three circles, or three lines for those two circles. And then for C, you should get two, because you can't go down the middle, because remember, tangents do not go inside the circle. All right, the last bit of information that we know about tangents is that if you have two tangent lines, and they are coming from a single endpoint, then they're equal in length. I also want to draw in here because this is the radius. This is the radius. What type of figure did I just draw? Right. We also know that these are going to be 90 because the radius and tangent. And don't forget 360 degrees because this is a quadrilateral. You can always find angles there because of 360. I also want you to notice this angle opens up to this arc, which is a central angle. And what do you know about central and the arc? 
it opens up to, they're equal. So a lot of different things can happen in that one diagram. This one is just asking us to solve for x. So because they're tangent and they come from common endpoint, we're just going to set them equal. 3x plus 4 equals 28. Subtract the 4, so you get 3x equals 24. Divided by 3, x equals 8. All right, last problem says, what is the perimeter of this polygon? It is touching the circle at one point. Okay, each line. So these are all tangent lines. So remember what we just did, these are going to be equal. So this part down here will be 17. These are going to be equal. That's 7. 8 can come up here and 3 can come up here. So to find this perimeter, we're just going to add everything up. 8 plus 8 plus 7 plus 7 plus 17 plus 17 plus 3 plus 3. All equals the perimeter of this quadrilateral to be 70. Okay, so recognize that those are common tangents. All right, thanks for watching.